Well, earlier today we had the news that the wonderful Hurricane Fly, the winner of 22 Grade 1 races, has been retired at the age of 11. And here to reflect on that incredible career now is the man who partnered him to so many of those great successes, Ruby Walsh. Ruby, a sad day in many ways, but a great day as well because he's getting out in one piece and he leaves behind some wonderful memories, doesn't he? I don't think it's sad, really. I think sad is what you read in the front half of a newspaper, not the back half. Um, and look, he had an amazing career. He was a great horse. And, um, Hopefully he'll have the retirement he deserves. Take us right back to the early days. I think you wrote him when he won his maiden hurdle at Punchestown. Was it at the, the back end of that first season? It was, it was May. It was, yeah. Um, some, it was an evening meeting on a Wednesday night. Um, he won a maiden hurdle at quite a considerable distance. <laughs> um, and then he went to France and won uh, a fortnight later, maybe ten days later even. He won uh, a grade two four-year-old hurdle over two, two, three, two, three and a half. Um, and then he went back to the grade one uh, a couple of weeks later I was suspended and he was second actually Q Viga was third um, and then he came back he was still a novice obviously and he had a great novice career um, he didn't make it to Cheltenham unfortunately um, that defeat of going eight of at Leopard Sound I think was nearly as impressive a win by, I've ever seen by a novice hurdler the way he left him behind after the yeah, last yeah Paul wasn't that day he just sprinted away from the back of the last and you know, as we know like going eight of had unbelievable gears um, you know they were having a fair set too in Morgiana many years later when going eight of fell at the last but um you know, they were like, obviously two very good novices, but, um, you know, in fairness to Hurricane Fly, he, he proved even as a four-year-old that distance wasn't an issue to him. He was able to travel, and um, he was just a hell of a good horse from day one. Yeah, as you say, it was a pity he didn't get to Cheltenham in that novice season, but he more than made up for it when he went back there subsequently, didn't he? He did. Uh, I don't think he made it the following year either, did he? I think it was two years later, actually, before he got there. Um, I think he was a seven-year-old before he got to Cheltenham. Um, you know, and he, he obviously... That first year he won his champion early, he was quite free through the race, but um, you know he battled unbelievably well to beat Peddler's Cross, and um, I guess show everyone on the other side of the water how good we thought he was. But um, look, he was an amazing horse, who had an amazing, an amazing career, but like he was so, he was such a great horse to ride. Um, whatever the tactics were, if you had to make it, you could. And if they went to gallop and you were sat in, you could do that. And um, I guess when the pressure was on from the from the second last home, and, and the screw was really being turned, you could. He could ride him at the last hurdle like it wasn't there. Um, he was just so so professional and so athletic, and um, he had guts to go with all his talent. And to go back there and win that second champion hurdle after all that had gone on in between times, that was a pretty special day. Obviously. It was, you know, and he was off the bridle quite early in that champion hurdle for some reason, and I suppose I ended up probably plenty in front, plenty soon enough on him, um, away from the second last, but like he just outstayed the others then from their home. But like he had some amazing days in Epperstown, uh, some great days in Punchestown, and you know, two, two magnificent champion hurdle wins to go with it. Yeah, and there was even talk about maybe calling it a day before last season. I don't know whether that was ever a realistic possibility, but that win at Punchestown fairly silenced anybody who was thinking that way, didn't it? I don't think it was as a 10-year-old, um, and it's still probably a brave enough decision as an 11-year-old to pull the plug, but, um, you know, as a 10-year-old, it was never going to be, it was never going to happen. Um, and he came back to, to the Morgan and he beat Jetski quite well, and went to Leperstown at Christmas and, and beat him again, and then went and won a fifth Irish champion hurdle. So, um yeah, it was definitely worth bringing him back anyway. Yeah, and a tremendous character of a horse as well. I mean, Willie Mullins always points this out as well. We have that story about him taking a lump out of his backside one day and charging around the field. I remember being in the field with Willie one day and he was afraid he was going to knock the two of us down. He really was a character, wasn't he? Yeah, thankfully now I didn't have too much to do with him in his day, but um, that was Gail Carlyle's job and Paul Townend tacked him up most mornings, so thankfully I didn't have to do that. But um, yeah, he was himself and he's still himself. Um, even watched him in the last sort of... He's been back in sort of four weeks and there's... You know, he's in great form. Um, he looks a million dollars and, you know, what the future holds for him, I don't know, but um, I'm sure he'll enjoy it. Yeah, and it really shouldn't be underestimated. I know you've made this point on several occasions, the job Willie and his team have done with him just to keep him at that level for, for so long, particularly after the injury problems earlier on in his career. Some achievement. You know, and people talk about the great job um, flat trainers do with horses to get them from two to three to four. <laughs> Willie Mullins got him from four to 11. Uh, that's seven seasons. Um, it's incredible um, to keep a horse... So physically sound and mentally sound, um, you know, it's amazing. Like, look, it's sad to see the back of good horses. Um, so it's, I suppose it is disappointing to see the back of a great horse and um, trying to find one that has his longevity um, is the next task. Well, if you're going to find it anyway, you're in the right place to find it. <laughs> yeah, look, we have plenty of potential, but, you know, longevity and soundness makes great horses. So hopefully the horses we have, we have are as lucky. Um, yeah. But you need longevity as a jumper to to become a great yeah and that's why I'd say that legacy 22 grade ones that sure I mean you can never say never but that's going to be a hell of a job to equal that isn't it yeah but I mean to pitch up year on year I mean what's like since he was a four year old he's running nothing but grade ones um, he's never had it turned up for a soft touch he's turned up every day in a grade one and 
and you know and performed um, it's amazing and when you get to a day like this do you tend to, to get some of the old races and watch them back or is it all just stored away up above I, I have the best memories Gary looking, up, <laughs> looking out between his ears um, watching him on replays isn't the same thrill but um, I had wonderful layers with him and you know he was just was a great horse I mean when you, when you turned in and the pressure was on he was just he was just incredible to ride he's been a joy to watch all that time